Sorry for the delay once again. Okay, everybody knows I'm always fashionably late. Um, as some of you may be aware that there has been a um, uh, several incidents that, well, two incidents have taken place in Florida uh, where there has been um, some firebombs that have been placed uh, in, in, in uh, isolated areas um, that were compromising other people passing by. So uh, with that being said, I had to, uh, I was conferencing with uh, some people that are in the state of Florida and I didn't think that it was going to go that long, but however it did. And so, but however, I am here and what we're going to do tonight, we're going to go and I, I want to, to take the time out to uh, explain to everybody what a pauper's affidavit is as well as I want to explain to everybody what a statement of inability is. Okay, now, in order to provide uh, equal and open access to uh, the courts uh, for a party to be able to go and litigate, uh, whether they uh, are going to go um, pro se or if they uh, have applied, applied for a legal aid service, uh, for a pro, pro bono uh, legal aid service, uh, for representation for an attorney who may have been volunteered, uh, may have volunteered to uh, uh, provide services for personnel that whose income fall below the federal poverty line. Okay, typically uh, individuals uh, who are, uh, have an income that does not exceed 200% of the federal poverty line are eligible for um, pro se or uh, pro bono legal representation, meaning that they will be able to go to wherever their lo local legal aid service is in their county or a uh, city and ask for legal representation or legal advice on um, whatever issues that they may be facing, whether it be a civil issue and, uh, well, basically most of them are, are for civil issues. Uh, if it's under the criminal statute for any uh, type of criminal uh, activity that you may have been in, uh, uh, engaged in or alleged to have been engaged in, uh, then typically the, the courts will uh, complete a uh, affidavit, a uh, statement of inability or a pauper's affidavit that will allow you to uh, be assigned a uh, court-appointed counsel to represent you in the legal environment for a criminal proceeding. But uh, civil proceedings, uh, civil proceedings are not um, some would like to say they're not necessary, but they are. Uh, however, uh, most statutes around the, the United States and abroad uh, for all our U.S. Prop properties, Alaska, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, Guam, and the U.S. Virgin Islands, those uh, civil cases, uh, they're not, mostly do not assign um, attorney representation for personnel that want to proceed uh, uh, you know, if they can't afford to retain the counsel on their own. Okay, so what I want to do today is I want to kind of break, make it clearer uh, on uh, wh what is means to proceed in a civil litigation as a pauper. Okay, a pauper is a, a person, as we've already uh, discussed, one uh, eligibility is a person who whose income does not exceed 200% of the federal poverty line. And typically, if you are a single individual, uh, such as myself, uh, where um, in order to proceed as a pauper, uh, you would have your, your federal, your income cannot exceed, I think it's around about uh, $1,150 a month. Okay. Uh, of course, I, I don't uh, qualify that. Uh, if some of you have been uh, paying attention to the uh, court orders that have been coming out from the higher courts that are denying me uh, uh, access to the courts, uh, claiming that my income, well, which is a government entitlement this time, um, which it far exceeds the federal poverty line uh, almost five times. And so uh, somewhere around about maybe uh, $4,300, $4,400 a month uh, for a government entitlement uh, for uh, some people um, that may have served in the United States Armed Forces or who 
uh, may be receiving a uh, government entitlement such as Social Security uh, Disability, uh, Social Security Income, SSI or SSD. Okay, um, even though that you have uh, SSI, SSD, and uh, or you may uh, be eligible for uh, compensation or pension uh, from a government agency like the Department of Veteran Affairs, uh, you still are can apply and request if your conditions are severe enough uh, for an enhanced disability. Okay, uh, if you are most, I think, on average the if you were receiving top uh, percentage of Social Security income, I think it's somewhere around about, I've, I've, I've witnessed a, and, and heard that some people receiving somewhere in the ballpark about $1,500, okay? And uh, some people who are receiving SSD uh, are receiving um, pay as low as $700. Of course, you are eligible, if you are one of those type, uh, or one of those individuals that receive uh, income does not exceed the federal poverty line, then uh, you are eligible to proceed as a pauper. Okay, now a pauper's affidavit is uh, you go through and you list uh, you know your name, address, and um, city and state zip code, and then they'll have you itemize um, your expenses, uh, what your monthly expenses are. Uh, then they uh, ask you for proof of your government entitlement. Okay. And if you have food stamps or uh, SSI, uh, Social Security Disability, or Social Security Income, um, uh, compensation from the Department of Veteran Affairs, um, pension payments from the Department of Veteran Affairs, or some retirement ben benefits if you work for a railroad or, or a commission uh, somewhere, then those are uh, conditions that are and entitlements that are um, permitted to allow you to proceed without court cost okay now in the event that you your entitlement exceeds the federal poverty line uh, and uh, but however your your entitlements that you receive are not high enough in order for you to be able to go and shell out five and six even higher than that depending on how compli complicated complex your case is uh, it may uh, constitute for you to have to uh, fill out a statement of inability, okay? A statement of inability, it says basically uh, under Rule 1, for, if you live in Texas, under Rule 145 of the uh, Texas Rules of Civil Procedure, um, there it, it, it gives you can the uh, it cites in the statute that the conditions that you are uh, eligible to complete a statement of inability and be able to proceed without court costs. Now, courts typically uh, consider any type of uh, monetary funding that you receive uh, per month uh, as income. Okay. Uh, however, uh, if you are a veteran of the United States Armed Forces, uh, Publication Five Eighty Five of the United uh, of the Internal Revenue Service Code. Um, states within the that pamphlet there on page six uh, that uh, all government entitlement that are received from the Department of Veteran Affairs, which is a non-taxable funding, um, are not interpreted as income, okay? So there's not even a place for it, uh, that type of payment on an income tax return form, uh, income tax filing form. Um, Government entitlements that are received from the Department of Veteran Affairs or typically for um, circumstances such as work therapy, um, uh, expenses for um, traveling to and from medical appointments, uh, expenses for uh, uh, um, funding for housing if you are, don't qualify for subsidized housing, which is another entitlement that, that uh, authorizes you to be able to proceed without court costs. But if your uh, entitlement is higher than the uh, federal poverty line, then you're eligible to um, apply uh, for apply and file a statement of inability if you have a civil proceeding or um, you're in a position where you have to pay court costs. Now, if you are have been convicted for an offense like uh, maybe a misdemeanor or criminal uh, felony offense under the criminal code for your state or for the under the federal code, uh, then you 
are eligible for an exemption of court costs if you complete a statement of inability, if your uh, entitlement is above the federal poverty line, or a published affidavit if it is below uh, and does not exceed 200% of the federal poverty line. So basically, if you uh, have been to prison or jail and you have uh, an outlandish court cost that you uh, cannot afford to pay each month, or whether you have to pay, have paid in installments or pay lump sum, the higher it is that you have to uh, satisfy that portion of your sentencing order, uh, then you are eligible to complete a pauper's affidavit or a statement of inability uh, and ask the courts to allow you to uh, proceed without having to pay court costs. So, most of the time, <clears throat> and for an example, I'm going to give you a, a really good example. Uh, last year, in um, maybe year before last, in Marshall, Texas, there was a, a gentleman who had some court costs. He goes into the DMV downtown, and um, he walks in, and the clerk tells him, okay, well, sir, you have a... Uh, uh, capious warrant, uh, a capious warrant, which means that you are to be uh, taken into custody on site. Okay, if you have a, uh, usually if it's a city warrant, uh, then that capious warrant usually applies to the city. If you, uh, say, because if you're in Marshall and you go to any of the surrounding cities, if you have a capious warrant in Marshall, you go in around the surrounding cities and get stopped by a police officer. It all depends, is at the discretion of the officer whether or not they want to try to uh, detain you. Or, and, or take you into custody, place you under arrest to allow uh, the other city who is looking for you uh, to come and uh, extradite you uh, back to that city. Okay, so basically, uh, a capious warrant usually applies to the city. So if you can uh, 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 stay clear and be cooperative and follow all the officer's command, usually if you have a capious warrant in a surrounding city that you're not in, uh, then usually sometimes you can beat it. You can even beat it uh, with uh, on, on the side of the road with an officer and, and avoid going to jail uh, if you're um, courteous, okay? If you're courteous and kind, be respectful to the officers and don't be uh, argumentative and, and follow their commands. And then uh, a lot of it, I can't say 99.9% of the time uh, that they will let you go, but a lot of times they will allow you to uh, proceed without uh, having to be taken into custody. Okay, how you can alleviate the uh, KPS warrants if you have uh, been convicted of an offense, uh, a felony, a misdemeanor offense, and you have court costs that is pending and that you have to pay each month, what you can do is contact the, your clerk of the court and complete a statement of inability if your income is uh, or funding uh, or entitlement is exceeds 200% of the federal poverty line or um, you can, if it does not exceed 200% of the federal poverty line, you can always fill out a pauper's affidavit and ask them to uh, relieve you or, or exempt you from having to be uh, uh, liable to pay the court costs. And so I just saved um, uh, maybe a few months back a good friend of mine who had $4,500 that he owed and he had been paying and had been struggling every month to pay it. And I said, well, why are you doing that? You don't even work and you have a government entitlement. So we filled it out. And so what happened? It went to zero. So he didn't have to pay it. So now, so that's what that is. So if you are, are in a civil proceeding and um, um, and a civil proceedings in, in the state of Texas, those are normally handled under the like the Texas rules civil procedure where you can uh, proceed uh, uh, without having to pay court costs by being, filling a statement of inability pursuant to rule 145 F of the Texas Rules Civil Procedure. Uh, if it goes to a appellate court where something is ruled against you and decided against you, you want to appeal something, uh, a judgment uh, or, or interlocutory order, something that was decided in the trial court against you, uh, then what you can do is you can complete a pauper's affidavit if you're if your entitlement does not exceed 200% uh, of the federal poverty line and you can get relief that way. All right, so that is pretty uh, uh, simple, cut and dry. And again, the appellate procedure, you can read under Texas Rules of Appellate Procedure, Rule 20.1, and it will uh, uh, tell you all the um, stipulations of the rules, okay? Now, the next thing. Uh, everyone is uh, getting alarmed uh, about uh, uh, the special counsel's um, report. Uh, where uh, I think I, 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 I touched on it a little bit on the last um, 
video that I did. Um, the special counsel's report it it actually it, it, it was it was conducted on a it was an investigation that was conducted on a level that's really uh, not even fitting to be uh, viewed by uh, the public. Okay, if you uh, were to uh, like I said before, if you've been in an environment where uh, and exposed to uh, documentation or um, other exhibits that may be uh, classified as confidential, secret, or top secret, okay, not all that is is always a fitting for everybody to hear. Okay, you just cannot do it, and uh, so I think that the special counsel's uh, report again. It should uh, be redacted uh, in order to ensure security for any um, personnel that may have um, job occupations and assignments that are uh, where there's a civil order protection on the identity where you're not uh, uh, even permitted to even repeat uh, what their job is uh, to another person. If you did, then that is a felony. Okay. Uh, if you um, were to pass out a document of uh, a document as the special counsel's uh, uh, report uh, then that could uh, uh, that could compromise the safety of uh, a personnel that are referenced in the, in the document so you don't want to do that okay so I think that it would be a reckless endangerment if we did uh, provide the public with an unredacted um, uh, uh, special counsel's report uh, on the Russia investigation, okay? So whatever all that encompass is not uh, uh, for uh, everyone, okay? Uh, I think that uh, what the public should be aware is, uh, as referenced on the last video, is that if there are any type of financial uh, crimes that are contributory to why our deficit here in the United States is can't recover, okay? The reason why our deficit can't recover is because for since at least uh, 1985, I can say for sure uh, that we have uh, had scenarios where there have been entities uh, across the country and foreign entities in other countries that have built millions of dollars from our financial system and have evaded and escaped uh, their obligations as far as paying taxes on the monies that they uh, uh, we allow for them to uh, enjoy their fruit or their transgression. Okay, um, you have to uh, consider that any time you have uh, a network or a business that concentrates on uh, generating funds downstream in order uh, and, and to generate funds downstream, what that does it 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 hurts the people. Uh, below, okay. So everyone who's affected, because say for instance you have a uh, a court case, and uh, let's take an eviction for it. For it. Um, uh, matter of fact, since uh, Trump is the uh, eviction king, um, let's take an eviction. So you get sued in eviction. They sue you for two thousand dollars, okay. Uh, well, that two thousand dollars you got sued for, you probably can't pay that uh, uh, right now. But however, there is going to be. At some point, some other third party, such as a collection agency, that's who are supposed to uh, operate uh, in accordance with the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, who are going to uh, attempt to collect the debt from you, and then that income that they receive or or payment they receive, more than likely, sometimes don't even make it back to the original party, and sometimes the original party sell the sell those accounts to uh, the third party to collect on, so just to for the sake of saying that we did uh, make an attempt to collect on that debt and, and when they've written it off a long time ago. So basically, it's like these collection agencies are getting free money. It's downstreaming, okay? Um, in order to uh, uh, downstream someone, uh, if you sue someone and if you are a uh, apartment renter, well, then you know that whenever you have a new renter who comes in or maybe interested in uh, relocating and uh, uh, renting a uh, uh, property for lease or whatever or rent or whatever uh, at your location but then if they have a negative blemish that is relevant to or in comparative to what you're trying to lease such as department okay if you already have an apartment on your lease some apartments won't even lease to you 
okay you just got tricked into going in there and filling out an application fee and and, and fattening in their pockets up even further when uh 99.9 percent .9 of the time they already know that you're not going to qualify for it when they take you around oh yeah this is the tour over here here's the pool and here's the uh, golf course and um we got a recce ball course over here and we had the maids come in on tuesdays and fridays and the trash pickup is on such and such and now we had the bus stop over here and we we're just really courteous you know blah 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 bullshit okay no they know that you are not going to get that apartment okay they're selling this is a a a $35 tour that you're going to go around a complex that you're never going to move into because you have a, a eviction that's already uh, reflective on your consumer credit report that disqualifies you so basically uh sometimes these these uh rental application they can go from 35 to 100 dollars uh and you just went out there and just gave away 100 dollars when um, you know that well when they know that you're not going to qualify so you be real, really particular about when you're going to go and lease property when you do go and lease property you want to do your background check on who it is that you're leasing from okay you want to make sure that the a contract that you sign is not one-sided you want to make sure that the person who is um, writing the lease is eligible to make such agreement you want to make sure that the uh, content stated in the lease is uh, going to be followed to the letter. You're going to uh, ensure that uh, everything is clear, uh, such as, uh, let's say, for instance, that uh, everything is clear as far as who's going to pay for your attorneys if uh, you get into the default of your contract. Okay, but a contract that has a statement within that lease is that you will pay uh, you will pay for their attorneys if you come and default this contract that is a one-sided agreement and you should always uh, uh, uh ask the lender that you disagree you you should always tell the uh, renter that you disagree with this portion of the contract and you want to exit out of the agreement or not even rent there at all okay so be very careful on what you're signing because once you sign it and uh it isn't properly endorsed and if they are authorized and um uh, not in no kind of tax forfeiture or anything that prohibits them from doing business in the state then it is prosecutable okay and you are will be held liable to the fullest extent if it's a written agreement uh, uh, before a court of law uh, in the state of Texas which uh, we've already discussed and some of you have already seen some of my other videos uh, where I've uh, alerted everyone that um, it is very very complicated to be a um, eviction case within the state of Texas, even if it's for non-payment of rent or holding over, okay? Now, moving right along, so that is downstreaming, okay? That's still downstreaming, so make sure you concentrate on that. Now, the next thing is, every, everyone is 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 concerned uh, about all this uh, millions of dollars we spent on the Russia investigation, and uh, but you gotta keep in mind that not only was the Russia investigation going on, there were multiple other, 17 other investigations that was going on through other um, agencies and uh, individual pro se litigators such as myself uh, against um, uh, uh, businesses that are affiliated or linked directly to uh, the Trump organization, okay? So um, what's going to happen is in order for uh, those, I'm sure the special counsel's uh, re report did reflect some of the uh, things that um, Michael Cohen kind of hinted at, but he didn't it really elaborate on uh, those personnel that uh, uh, it applies to uh, should or uh, what I would do is um, a, a request a move your court for request for deposition to in order to substantiate what it is that Michael Cohen was saying so you could talk to him personally to find out if what he uh, was trying to communicate uh, in the transcript. I put a copy of the transcript on our, our website today. You, you're free to go there and look at it word for word or copy it into a word program and have word read it to you back and forth because if you don't want to read all the pages. But however, if you don't understand what uh, he was saying because he was talking kind of code, uh, uh, coded, uh, then you should always uh, ask for deposition in order to speak with him directly, whether it's on the cross-examination over the phone or through a video conference. Uh, or by interrogatories, there's some questions on a piece of paper uh, to uh, substantiate what it is that you need to know if it applies to your case. Okay, as far as uh, the uh, uh, Farms claim uh, of being exonerated, okay, if you believe that, you are a retarded fool. Okay, that man is not exonerated. That man is in big trouble. 
Okay, that man is, he has no idea exactly what it is that he is going to do. He has no idea just because he's the president now, okay, but but the the, the, the things that, that are already proven and that there is certified evidence that shows that uh, he did uh, uh, fraudulently uh, commit several acts of tax fraud, tax evasion, it's not no tax dodge or whatever. It's tax evasion, okay? This man is in big, big freaking trouble, okay? Uh, if you paid attention to the news this afternoon, you will learn that the uh, Judiciary House Committee has authorized uh, for uh, uh, a subpoena for his last six years of taxes, okay? Normally, uh, they normally ask for three years, but, you know, but his is so serious, you have to go back six years because... Uh, whenever you have someone who's claiming an exemption of $935 million, do you know $935 million? This guy has uh, asked for exemptions for in the past for businesses that don't even exist, okay? This motherfucker has, um, excuse my language, but he has registered a business or, or 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 someone with his organization has registered a business uh, for tax relief uh, uh, of the Texas Tax Amnesty Code, uh, Texas Texas Tax Amnesty Program, where uh, they were in tax forfeiture. A day after I served him with a citation and petition for a declaratory judgment and writ of mandamus, uh, these fools went over and and registered uh, for a tax relief in the MC program in a dead man's name. The man died in February 2018, February 7th, 2018. They uh, registered under his name, signed electronically a uh, public franchise tax information report um, that was relieving them from all their past due tax obligations uh, for the state of Texas, which they did the same thing in Iowa. And uh, I have that certified from the state secretary in Iowa that they signed up for the amnesty program there and didn't pay nothing. Way a uh, these organizations are operating as a monopoly, okay? And I mentioned that before. Uh, uh, Darcy, uh, um, he uh, worked for the Queen, and Mr. Allen uh, worked at the haberdashery in the city of laundry, uh, city of uh, uh, London, okay? And uh, Darcy sold cards for the Queen. And so, but Mr. Allen wanted to sell cards also, but he didn't have access to obtain the cards uh, as well as Mr. Darcy did from the Queen. So, but he had to go through it. So this is called a case of monopolies. It's under the old English law. Okay, in today's world, we have what's called the Clayton Antitrust Act, okay, or the Antitrust Act, which prohibits any type of business organization uh, that are operated in the form of a monopoly where they concentrate on making money downstream. And the reasons why these businesses never pay is because in order for the people to make money that are head of these businesses or the, the top of the down line, that's the reason why it's Hillary Clinton Hillary Clinton says trumped up, trickle down. Well, you have to you have to go downward. You can't go up. Okay? If you go downward, then the people there they they you you have to uh, forfeit the business. You cannot make you cannot pay the taxes in order for everybody to make the money. You have to downstream, okay? Because that creates a gap and a whole downline is going to fall, okay? Um, there was a documentary that was watching. It was one of the third world countries where the the whole country was dependent upon the monopoly. If we do if we don't stop this type of house flipping maneuvers that are going around the country uh, right now. And if it, it plagues enough of uh, the country where uh, a lot of people are dependent upon this defaults in order to uh, get rich and evade tax obligations, well, we're going to be just like that company when someone pays or they so much gets busted, which they are busting people left and right. Okay, trust me, I I will not bullshit you. If you want to uh, confirm what it is, what it is I'm saying, you can just log on to doj.gov. And look up some of the cases. You'll see exactly how many fraud cases there are, and how much property has been seized. And um, and then uh, we have uh, uh, the, the the lady uh, Warren who has uh, put in an article in the paper uh, in the news media, uh, stating that there are uh, enough foreign Indies that will uh, 
make up a landmass area the size of the state of the Commonwealth of Virginia uh, of foreign entities. Okay, so remember I was saying eminent domain. If you keep doing that, okay, selling for, uh, selling your uh, 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 land to uh, people you don't know who they are or where they come from, it could be ISIS. Okay, ISIS did say that they was going to take five hundred million dollars they stole from the oil assets they stole in Syria uh, to invest in real property here in the United States. It could be them. Okay, if you if you allow that to continue and it spreads across the nation, then they can take over the whole country. And they can take it over by uh, by law. They can. Uh, it's called eminent domain. Okay, remember that eminent domain. If you uh, seen someone like in Dallas, maybe back in maybe about twenty years ago, uh, that was uh, when they were uh, uh, doing the uh, redevelopment in North Dallas, and they started putting up all the big mix masters. You know, big uh, highways, mix masters. They call it. That's what they call it, uh, freeway uh, turnpikes, whatever it is. Um, well, Texas threw up a lot of concrete in there. But, however, when they was building that, well, there was people that had houses out there who did not want to move. They couldn't afford to move, okay? And the people that wanted to take over the area wasn't trying to pay them because they had they owned all the rest of the area. So they tell this person, either you get out or we're going to just, like, knock your house down and build it anyway, okay? That's eminent domain. You have to move, okay? Don't do that. Do not sell your property. Uh, don't don't allow someone to manage your property with the efforts to uh, uh, um, get you some extra income. It's not worth it. Okay, uh, if you want to live like a slave in the end, uh, it, it will happen. Okay, so don't get conned and don't get shortchanged. Okay, but however, back to Trump. We got back to Trump. Fraud. Trump equals Trump. Okay, so back to Trump. Trump thinks that he's uh, off the hook. He is not off the hook, Bubba. Trust me. Uh, at this point, uh, everybody is uh, glad that the Russian investigation is over and they want to see what was written. And uh, I oppose uh, for uh, the country to see uh, everything that is written uh, in it uh, because it does not, uh, you don't require a need to know, okay, all of it, okay. But, however, uh, with regards to house flipping, I think everybody needs to know all that. Okay, so that way you can get a, a grip on exactly what it is. So when you see that they, when they prosecute him, he is going to get a sentence somewhat, uh, not as severe as Saddam, but he's going to get a sentence that is going to send a message across the world. Do not fuck with the United States. I'm telling you, don't fuck with the United States government. I have been getting the government. To, I'm 50 years old. On the 17th, this month, I'll be 51. Since I was 18, I've been receiving the government check ever since I was 18 years old. Basically, I've been working for the government for that long. And uh, so I'm going to let you know is that uh, Uncle Sam, uh, the Uncle Sam will spend $10 million to recover $10. They will. Okay. And they will prosecute you to the highest, fullest extent of the law. If you have not uh, been in a uh, before a federal uh, magistrate or federal court uh, in answer to any type of criminal offense, uh, whether it's felony or misdemeanor, um, they're, they're not playing with you. And they, they would, but you're going to get a number, um, and I think that around uh, the 11th of this month, or well, I, I, I know uh, about the 11th of this month, that the uh, Congress and the House Oversight Committee, uh, they should be delivered uh, the special counsel's uh, investigation report. Uh, but then there's still going to be a, a downtime because they're going to go into a recess uh, for 14 days or so. Uh, I think to from the uh, 11th to almost around about the uh, 30th of April. Okay, and then May 1st is when the uh, all the processes are going to to commence. So uh, by the 10th of this month, all processes uh, that are pending are going to carry on as an operation of law. OK, because they have to do it this way. Uh, you, the government, it, it would be unfair for the government to go in and, and, um, and prosecute Trump and, and, and he goes and does some do some kind of fuckery and, and try to overrule this and overrule that just to cover his own ass. No, you're not going to overrule shit because uh, all these other investigations, they're going to carry out first. OK, as operational law, once they're done with you. OK, and, and those those uh, investigations that are pending. Those are uh, considered spinoff investigations, okay? So we've uh, uh, had the main part of uh, Mueller's investigation, but all the others, they're equally as important, okay? 
And uh, so, and most of those investigations are more severe and they're gonna come at him uh, with a truckload of things that he knows about and knows he's done that, that he's fraud. This just like Michael Cohen said, he is fraud and I put that on everything. I would not lie to you. And uh, and, and uh, it's like, uh, if you read some of the filings with, um, I posted in the past uh, from the motions and stuff that were four and 500 pages long, uh, you will see nothing but certified evidence that I've recovered from Texas, Louisiana, Georgia, Florida, Iowa, and the um, State Department in New York, uh, where um, there are uh, all those documents are before the, sec uh, the Southern District of New York right now, and they're following up on all that. So it's all valid. So well, I don't know exactly what's going to happen to him, uh, but all this occurred before the president uh, uh, took office. And at the time that uh, it was discovered on what exactly was going, because it took me a while to figure out uh, how it went. Uh, but when I did, uh, I figure out how I went, and and I was I didn't I wasn't prejudicial. I didn't even I didn't even know. Uh, well, I I had an idea in my initially uh, uh, I discovered the documentation back in 2014, but uh, I knew it was went around Trump Tower, but it didn't dawn on me uh, that it was it was possibly him. Okay, because uh, it didn't dawn, dawn on me until like October of 2017, so that was a year after he had already taken office. So um, the United States just couldn't go through and throw these things at the uh, a nominee for our president because it was seen prejudicial and biased that someone was throwing the bullshit game in order to disqualify him, for, even though he, he is disqualified because there is uh, no way that he uh, is, will be able to uh, prove or provide any proof uh, uh, through affidavit or even testimony or whatever, even provide a witness to come up there and testify on his behalf uh, to show any validity in the businesses that he has uh, done. Uh, even the ones that you have people like um, um, the, the the rapist, uh, the baby, uh, I mean, R. Kelly. R. Kelly's living in, in uh, Trump Tower. Well, even that building, that building right there is is is, is engaged in fraud. Okay, all of the um, ownership and the way that they uh, flip it around in order for this person to make money, and from um, the first quarter and then the second quarter, the second four months, the next part person make make money. Well, they all go into tax forfeiture, and it is a big old mess. Okay, and I really uh, um, I don't feel sorry for him because it was intentional. He did it with malicious intent. He did it with uh, against people who could not afford to go through and litigate uh, 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 by uh, retaining a, a counsel. He did it to people that did not have any knowledge, which was any knowledge of an experience in the legal environment. And when you do stuff like that, it's called an unconscionable, unconscionable act. Okay, it's an unconscionable act. Okay, and. And so as far as the collusion with uh, Russia, I don't know uh, how you can collude with uh, 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 another country. Uh, but however, uh, collusion as defined by the Black's Law Dic Dictionary uh, 2010 edition, it means a cooperation or conspiracy between ostensible opponents usually involved in a lawsuit. Now that applies to my case because it, it is. Now you have uh, in this case here, here you see the big fight that I've been posting orders on uh, Facebook where the, the court reporter is refusing to give up the transcripts because they don't want me to show the public exactly what uh, occurred in the trial court. Okay, If you uh, go to a civil proceeding, there are two types of records that you have to be concerned with. One is the clerk's record. The clerk record uh, reflects any filings, notices, motions, uh, uh, hearing schedules, or any type of uh, subpoenas, requests, interrogatories, any, uh, with exception of the ter territories because you don't file those online, but any other type of documents uh, uh, that are filed into the case that goes in the clerk's record. Now, the truest record, uh, the, the truest record and the most accurate record is the court reporter's record. That shows exactly what was said by any party, whether they was a defendant, plaintiff, interested person, or or any other party witness or whoever, uh, uh, in, um, uh, whoever was appearing in the trial court, the judge, all that. Okay, it shows a minute by minute account. They do not want that to get out, and I am uh, really 
Uh, I don't want to uh, pay for it, but if I have to, uh, I will. But uh, however, there are other rules of law that uh, allows me to petition to uh, ask because if I start trying to pay for uh, the amount of pages of the transcripts that, that goes on and the arguments that, that we've had and the embarrassment that's going to cause him, uh, then that is going to be expensive for me. And I, 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 I can't afford it. They say that I can. They say I have the resources to uh, be able to afford these cases. No, I don't. I don't have, I don't have the resources to, to uh, continue to pay for something where uh, they have prevailed when they was not even authorized to. Under Texas Tax Code 171.156, it states that a corporation or business that is uh, uh, noted to be in tax forfeiture, franchise tax forfeiture, then they are not permitted to sue or defend in a Texas court. So regardless of what they say, they are not to prevail any kind of way. They, uh, anything they say, objection. Everything and the motion they ask for it is uh, considered to be a form of defense and uh, that is not permitted. It's objection. Okay. Uh, as of right now, this is what we have. We have the state of Texas uh, and the defendant in my case, Threshold Paradise, they've teamed up together. Yeah. The state of Texas, the officer of the court is uh, uh, an officer of the court, a court reporter is an officer of the court. She is an employee employed by the state of Texas. So basically, the state of Texas uh, occluded with Threshold Paradise LP uh, and they're kicking kaka, kicking kicking kaka, going on. Hey, let's go do that. Listen, now you think that Threshold Paradise got a copy of the court report's record? And I think they, they more than likely, they, they probably do. And, um, uh, and, and it's just bias. How the hell does the state uh, team up with the fucking defendant who has a history of nothing but fraudulent, fraudulent, fraudulent comp uh, com companies where I've shown nothing but certified evidence against them and everything that I'm speaking now is all certified. So you can go in and, and call me a liar, whatever you want to. And you don't call me a liar, you can call the states a liar because that's where I got it from. I got it from state secretary from five different states from which I followed this little uh, a rendezvous of, of fraudulent businesses all the way to uh, 712 Fifth Avenue in New York. Okay, so uh, that's where we are. Um, so as of right now, um, the courts have, if you read the last order, the courts have ordered that if I did not pay a filing, for, filing fee to pay uh, to, uh, to, to proceed on the appeal, it's only for $200, but only $200? No, I can I can find a whole lot of other things I can do with $200. I can also find, uh, find a whole lot of other things I can do with the $500 that the court reporter wants me to pay for the court reporter's record when I was already allowed to proceed without cost uh, uh, in the initial case. So, but she wants to go through, and you, I wonder how much does that cost? How much does the court reporter cost to uh, uh, that uh, that they could pay so much money that she would go through and give a disabled person uh, of the United States Armed Forces who has bills? I got bills. Okay, I have a business that is is hurt. Uh, where I am not making the money that I used to. I'm I'm barely living off five thousand dollars a month. And that is no money. And I'm I'm broke. I, I can't give her no five hundred dollars over here, two hundred dollars over there. I got expenses and stuff I need to pay for. I need to have a roof over my head. I need to have food to eat. I don't get no food stamps. I wish I did, but I don't get no food stamps. I don't get no child support. You know, you can't get child support. You got no kids. Um, I don't, I don't know spouse support. I ain't never been married. Um, nothing like that. So it's just all my government time that I'm um, uh, uh, benefit from, with the exception of any. Uh, small uh, jobs that I can kind of um, swindle, not swindle, but um, acquire along the way uh, from customers previously or potential customers, okay? But all this time, the past four or five years, I've lost, that has been a, a total economic loss of a business that where I was making pretty good. I was making just from my home at least 60, 60 grand a year, just from my house, okay? But now, it's, it's, it's trickled all the way down to almost zero. So, uh, I, and financially, uh, I'm, 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 they say I'm not impoverished, but I, I hate to I hate to see if, if I'm living the way I live right now, and the people who are living off of $700, $800 Social Security check, uh, and living, uh, how do they live off that, okay? 
Uh, it's not fair, okay? So why should I have to go through and, and, and pay a security or any type of court costs uh, where I'm prosecuting a case against a company who has nothing but a record of forfeitures, disillusions, revocations, all involuntary across the map and has been doing so uh, since 1985. Okay, they ain't filed no taxes, nothing. Not one company that I found that has ever uh, sustained itself uh, to survive. Okay, this other company, Threshold Bluffs, if you notice that the, the documentation I put on there from, uh, I obtained from uh, um, New York State Department, uh, well, it doesn't mention anything about Threshold Bluffs, even though Threshold Bluffs is the general partners for all of them. Okay, but it doesn't mention anything. So this They'll, they'll go through and they, it's like they grab them and they trick them along so they can qualify uh, for registration in the state. But then when it comes down time for refinance or go to forfeiture, whatever, then they go through and this finance company, previous finance country from the Dutch Bank, and uh, um, there is another, uh, uh, it, it'll come to me in a minute, it's a, it's a, uh, a finance company that, that they're using in order to uh, fund these companies in order to uh, uh, be able to prevail once they get to 712. Uh, Fifth Avenue, okay, con artists, that's what they are, they're very smart, okay, and I, I don't like the uh, people that think that I'm, I'm not a con artist, I try to live ethical, I try to uh, make sure that everything is done like it's supposed to be, I try to make sure that uh, my community is uh, uh, aware of what they are doing, right, right thing to do or what the wrong things are uh, through, from my personal experience, and I try to uh, make sure that that we when we have uh, uh people who just running game day after day after day after day after day after day everything is a game to them okay is everything is con with them you cannot uh it's all it, it's fucked up basically okay i'm not uh, we are going to uh be able to go through and look at all everything with meticulous attention to detail but my purpose tonight was to uh, tell everybody about the Pauper's Affidavit and Statement of Inability. Now, the last thing. Uh, Marshall, Texas, uh, we, we got to talk. All these deaths. There has been four deaths within the past two weeks, 14 days. Okay? Uh, people that have been irresponsible with firearms. Um, if you know someone who has a firearm, and if, if, if I'm not saying just anybody who has a firearm that, that in their house, because a lot of people got firearms that are not supposed to have them, okay? But uh, I'm talking about a fool with a firearm who's walking up and down the road, who know, you know he ain't supposed to have it. And if they're, uh, uh, especially if they're doing a criminal offense, they, you, you don't need, we don't need any more people shot, okay? Um, um, about uh, 10 days ago, there was, I was sitting here, um, late at night, you know, like about eleven thirty or so, I heard bang, 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 and you know I was, you know, and then I heard the ambulance. I said, uh "Oh, someone just got loaded up like a pistol." Next morning, I find out that a uh, young uh, male who went over to uh, intervene in a situation that wasn't even his business, didn't even involve him, uh, got involved in, in something, sticking his nose in his brother's business, or cousin's business, whoever it was, but however, he shouldn't have been there, and a death occurred. Um, then after that, we had a, um, a person who just bashed his girlfriend, the wife's head in with a hammer um, three days ago. Okay, and then we had a, uh, a situation where uh, two men, and, and this one right here, it really bothers me because uh, I know both families, uh, both uh, parties, I know both parties uh, that were involved in the, uh, uh, this uh, altercation, and, and I, I really, I, I'm sorry uh, that, that a death has occurred, uh, and uh, for whatever reason, I just uh, hope that, uh, that there's some kind of um, I know that the justice has to be done, but there there are ways to um, go through and 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 several things several things to uh, kind of calm ease the calm. Okay, uh, both of these families are, are very large, uh, and and uh, basically uh, it was actually one family that lost someone, and then the other uh, side, uh, the other party, he was he's the son of uh, someone who's 
married into a, another large family, which it doesn't include the other family. Um, that far as what I know, I don't think it does. But uh, however, it's just it was just nonsense. Okay, it was nonsense, and these were they were like. At a party and 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 something happened and uh, and then you know some people want to get the macho get the beer spirit and whatever they want to go and duke it out. But then uh, what happened was it, it, it ended up to where someone was struck and he fell back and uh, hit his head. From what I've been able to ascertain and uh, for what the rumor mill is, I, I don't that's that's no mark don't hold hold me gospel on that but it's pretty close i'm sure but however until something official comes out but we won't know uh but right now it is being looked at as a homicide investigation just just that simple okay and then uh night before last um there was another shooting where a 70 year old girl was shot in the head we gotta put the guns down people Okay, if you are irresponsible, we're, 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 it, it, it's no need to uh, pick up a gun and just lose your life or take someone else's life for something that is so minute, it's so petty. It, it's the pettiest things that, that people want to go and, um, and, and cause hate and discontent and, 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 and cause sorrow and losses for uh uh, uh, families that that that, that could be avoided. We gotta learn to get alone. Okay, we gotta learn uh, that uh, firearms are not uh, toys. We have to learn that uh, you keep your firearms at your house. If you're authorized to carry one, you know the rules. And if you need to uh, 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 implement deadly force, then uh, for yourself, or if you uh, are in possession of a firearm, you need to use someone else's force in order to thwart the situation, then you, you know uh, how to do it. You need to be responsible. Let's not, uh, let's take the firearms away from the people who do not need them. If they are on uh, um, substances, as far as controlled substances or uh, alcoholic beverage, if they're mentally insane, if they are um, being foolish, playing around with the firearm, you need to be vigilant and uh, intervene safely. Okay, you don't have to uh, directly, you know, you can choose not to directly approach that individual. Uh, you can always dial 911 and uh, call for assistance for personnel that uh, can respond that are skilled in uh, uh, entertaining uh, the fools and the idiots that are possessing firearms. Okay, so but we got to keep areas safe keep the area safe. It's not always a firearm that's involved. Like I was telling you about the altercation between the two young men where one man uh, uh, died and he went home and died in his bed after being uh, involved in an altercation down this, uh, a couple of houses down from his side of the field, less than 100 yards from his house. Okay, uh, and 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 don't party with people. They they party with all the time. They they are close. They close knit. They've known each other forever. And I really uh, am am sad to uh, hear um, that. Uh, and it it bothers me so because um, and it, 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 it it hurts me because I if I had the power, if I had the um, if I had the opportunity to uh, maybe uh, intervene into a situation that could have prevented the death of a 30-year-old man and it could have prevent the possibility of a conviction uh, for a homicide uh, for another individual who I know that he, he's, not, he's not cut out for no, uh, 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 he's not cut out for, for a, a state uh, jail or, or prison. He's not. Okay, and I'm not trying to talk bad about your son, but I, I'm just letting you know you're not, okay? And um, so there's nothing that you, uh, uh, nothing against you, but I know you're, it will hurt your mother to her heart, and she's such a sweet lady. And it's just not, just it's one of those things that you, you, you got to kind of uh, um, get involved with your communities. You got to uh, strengthen your communities. You got to keep it safe. You got to uh, encourage others the right way. Don't uh, get involved with, uh, uh, things that are uh, uh, negative, okay? If there are uh, scenarios where you have uh, individuals that are plaguing your community, such as people, uh, uh, if you deal drugs, um, they'll get to you. Trust me, I promise you, they, they will get to you, okay? Uh, that's no problem. But don't don't, don't be uh, one of these people who uh, know 
that this person over here uh, is, is not sound already. Okay, he's strung out on the been doing drugs for well, how many days now and, and, and is thinking all kind of weird stuff and sitting there with a firearm and then you give them more drugs, they go out and they'll do something else. Don't do that, okay? You are contributory to uh, their negligence, okay? And when they're negligent, you're also negligent. You can be held liable as well. As well as also, I want to make this, throw this in there also, okay? For those of you who uh, want to um, indulge and uh, uh, can't find somebody your age to party with, okay? Don't go out there and, and, and um, um, uh, fill somebody up with alcohol who you know that they're not uh, old enough to even uh, hold the beer in the first place. Okay, and you get them drunk, and they go out there and go shoot somebody or kill somebody, run somebody over, uh, 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 anything, some, anything, uh, 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 assault somebody in any kind of way. Uh, you're liable. Okay, you are the person who uh, uh, gave it to them. It's called contributing to the delinquency of a minor. And they, they may be over the age of 18, but they're not over the illegal drinking age, which means you are contributing to the delinquency of a minor and you are just equally liable. So whatever they do, you are equally liable and you should be prosecuted. If they do something and had to go to prosecution, you should also be prosecuted as well. Okay? So use sound mind, sound judgment, and um, stay vigilant. You don't have to uh, um, go out there and directly get involved if you uh, feel that you, that is not your uh, ability to go and, and control a bunch of uh, fools that that want to be fools. Uh, then you go through and, and you have nine one one. Dial that number and tell them to send someone over there now. Okay, and you can remain anonymous. Okay, if you uh, know uh, anything about any type of investigations that may be pending in your area um, that are unsolved, uh, because uh, I'm just gonna put you like this: uh, I'm 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 actually I'm happy with uh, the work that the Marshall Police Department does uh, and has been doing since I've been back home, and I have no complaint with them because I have not seen uh, uh, have not went and I'm very nosy and um, and. Um, I'm very nosy. I, I pay attention a lot, okay? And if there is something that is not uh, a correct uh, that a public official uh, would do, uh, I, I will use their, uh, use what I know as their chain of command or uh, however it, it is to, to address that issue, okay? Uh, whether it be through your city commissioner or your city mayor or whoever, uh, the police chief or a police sergeant, a lieutenant, whoever, okay, call them. And if they just bring it up to them, they'll take care of it, okay? But uh, don't just uh, 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 sit there and ignore a situation. It, it's, it's something to mind your business, but it's also something to ensure that, that uh, this person over here who has a firearm, uh, AK-47 or uh, M60 machine gun, whatever it is they have, uh, and you know they're not supposed to have it, okay? Uh, stay, stay vigilant and, and get it out of the hands of the people that don't don't need it because see not only could they kill themselves they could kill your child they could kill you they can kill uh, your parents or whoever they can kill uh, up a whole bunch of people uh, uh, just by flipping out from the control stuff and this idiot over here just sold them over here who also needs to go to jail as well okay and if you're dealing drugs I don't care what you do okay but when you go and you uh, provide something to someone uh, knowing that they're going to uh, behave in a manner that is going to be uh, detrimental or life-threatening to others and, and um, something that's going to be a detriment to your community, then you are equally liable, okay? So you got to be responsible for your actions. And I'm not saying I'm going to tell you, but uh, I'm saying that is that be responsible, okay? There's no, there's no excuse, okay? And uh, so with that being said, I think that's about uh, covers what I, I I ain't going to say right now. I'm not going to say anything else, but I will leave this with you. Um, I know that I have a deadline on the 11th. Okay, that would be the date that uh, uh, the uh, report would be uh, delivered to the personnel that uh, subpoenaed it. Okay, and the reason why they have to a waiting period uh, before it is delivered is because everything has to meet the fair notice requirements. Okay. Uh, which means that uh, whenever uh, something like that is requested, typically if it's if it's just on a regular request, it's going to be like ten days. If it's a uh, expedited request, three days. If it's an emergency request, one day. Okay, within twenty four hours.
Okay, so with something like that, you have to give it the regular course because it is a sensitive, highly sensitive document, and uh, you have to make sure that the personnel names that are uh, that are in there or any type of um, past work history or uh, any current work history that they may be or may not be involved in, um, then you don't want to compromise their safety by exposing it. Oh yeah, did you know such and such? She was a special agent with such and such. She did this, that, that. You know, that's, that's, that's not right. You, you, that's not how you uh, do that. So uh, just know that uh, if it does come out, uh, I'm expecting it to be redacted. And if it's not redacted, then, um, and if there's something on there that, that compromises someone's safety, I think I'm, uh, and, and with the, um, at, uh, I'm going to, uh, with, with, um, certain other, uh, issues that I, 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 I'm not going to, uh, uh, comment on right now, but I think that, uh, it's not for everyone. So just be prepared, uh, not to see it all and be prepared if, even if they get it and be prepared, don't be prepared that they may, they too may decide that not to even show you. Okay, you just have to trust the word of your representative that they are uh, have been fully briefed and that they will follow up on what the details are, are outlined in the special counsel's uh, investigation and whatever uh, other uh, details that come out in the other spinoff investigations during this counterintelligence investigation. That's what this is. If you remember, this is the same strategy that, that the United States used. Um, remember when the uh, terrorist attack happened in Mumbai, India uh, years ago? Well, we, we let them uh, interrogate their own people. But well, this is the same thing. That was a counterintelligence counter terrorist investigation. Okay, this is the same thing. Counterintelligence counter domestic terrorism investigation and possible um, other types of terrorist organizations that are not uh, identified uh, at this time. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close it for the night. And everybody good night and keep safe.